This first integration demonstration begins from the enterprise architect's perspective. And here we see the Zachman framework displayed. As the questions to these interrogatives are answered from the various stakeholders' perspectives and the cell artifacts created, the blueprint for the organization's information infrastructure will be created. Remember that each cell of the framework is interactive, displaying the artifact and the cell type associated with the cell. Not every cell must be complete before you begin. Many enterprise architects begin answering the question, why? Which identifies the motivation for the project. The interrogatives then move on to answering the who and the what type of questions. The why interrogatives help answer and define the business goals and business plans and are captured in the visible analyst as strategic planning statements. When we open the strategic planning hierarchy, we see these goals and plans defined and organized within the statement hierarchy. For example, the licensing services is a section of the Department of Motor Vehicles that has been further defined using these additional statements. These statement types can include policies, regulations, and business events. And we'll turn the statement types on. Additional statement types can be defined as necessary to meet your specific planning statement needs. Double clicking on the licensing services statement identifies the purpose and use of this high-level statement with regard to the Department of Motor Vehicles. The detailed description describes the item while the hyperlink in the notes field is used to coordinate this statement to the DMV website presented to the motoring public. Clicking on the links tab shows that the statement is linked to a system boundary as well as a function which is used on the functional decomposition diagram. Using the repository navigation feature, I'll double click on the function entry and here we show that the reverse link to the original planning statement is displayed. Using the planning statement hierarchy shown on the lower portion of the links to tab allows you to easily link this function to any additional statements at any time. We'll close this entry and open the functional decomposition diagram. I'll change the view level to 50 percent. And here we see the high-level business functions of the Department of Motor Vehicles graphically displayed with the licensing services decomposed to high-level business processes. You will remember from the data flow tutorial lesson that the SPORN feature integrates the functional decomposition diagram with the data flow diagram model, enabling you to generate the data flow diagram process models. Right mouse clicking on the, func on the function licensing services and then choosing spawn and load DFD opens the data flow diagram set spawned from the functional decomposition diagram. Here we see the context level process. As I explode this context process, we see the lower level processes as well as the data flows detailing the licensing services processes. These are the same processes as shown on the functional decomposition diagram. 
you can continue your development and choose to generate a data model from one of the selected processes. The file view of data model process feature compares the elements used in the data flows entering or leaving the process with the data elements defined in the entities. Those entities that share common data elements used in the data flows are added to the generated data model. The next example is from the business analyst's perspective and again begins with the strategic planning statement hierarchy. As part of the DMV requirements, the business analyst began by adding the new statement, all commercial drivers must pass the CDL, Commercial Driver's License, skills test. I've highlighted that statement here. The other planning statements defined in the hierarchy are also relevant to the DMV licensing requirements as well as detailing the registration and regulation systems. Again, double clicking on this statement displays the description of the DMV policies in the detailed description field. In order to fulfill this license policy requirement, the license applicant must pass both a knowledge test and a driving skills test. Again, selecting the links tab, we see that this particular requirement is linked to a number of other repository entries, including a process, an entity, two data elements, as well as an activity. These items are used in the project to model the requirements on those methodology diagrams, while the data elements are used to store the results of these tests. Let's double click on the activity Validate Applicant, which jumps to that repository entry and shows that this BPM activity is related to additional planning statements. Clicking the Locations tab and then the Diagram Location opens the diagram in the background. We'll exit the repository and display this high-level BPMN diagram. Included on the diagram are the activities modeling the road test and issuance of a driver's license. I've colored the activity Validate Applicant the color green to highlight this activity. This activity has been decomposed and subprocesses sub -processes on a child diagram have been defined. The plus sign on the bottom of this symbol is used to indicate the subprocess decomposition, graphically indicating this decomposition. Right mouse clicking and choosing the Explode option displays the BPMN subprocesses, activities that model the requirements defined by that planning statement. Double clicking on the activity CDL Knowledge Test displays the data element. Drag that down. CDL knowledge results as an attribute of this particular activity. Let's double click on this element and look at its location tab to show that the element is also used in a large number of other entries including entities as well as data flows and the activity. We'll exit the repository and open the data flow diagram, Driver's Licensing System. I'll change the view level to 80% and scroll down a bit. 
Here we see the data flows connected to the process administer CDL test. Using the repository integration feature, we can generate that entity diagram as well as the other entities related to the process through the shared use of the data elements, which I explained in the first example. Here I'll choose File, View of Data Model, and then Process, and we'll select the process Administer CDL Test and click OK. This entity data model was automatically generated and the entity CDL test included on the diagram. This entity is used to storage the knowledge and driving test results. I'll change the view level to show you the actual data elements. These data elements and the entity will be implemented in the DMV database. And here we see that data element, CDL knowledge result, shown as part of this entity's definition. Let's continue and demonstrate a third integration example. I'm going to open a use case diagram. Here we see three system boundaries. And this diagram will be used to demonstrate the interrelationship of these UML diagrams based on the software development lifecycle activities. The licensing department is used to indicate some of the DMV department systems, in this case the licensing department, or the registration system, or the regulation system. This type of high-level use case diagram can be used to define the parameters of the project. When I right mouse click on licensing department and choose the explode option, here we see a use case diagram which displays the use cases defined for testing drivers. The actors and use cases involved in this testing system are displayed and each use case can be linked to either an activity, a collaboration, or a sequence diagram, further describing the system. Another system boundary has been added on the right-hand side, again, which will be used to model reviewing a dri renewing a driver's license. When I right mouse click on the issue on the use case issue license, color to indicate the model linkage, we will display, in this case, the sequence diagram linked to the use case and show the implementation of this use case. Remember, each sequence diagram object is associated with a class, as shown when we right mouse click on the object and choose change item. And here from the drop down, we see a list of classes defined within the project. These classes would be modeled on a class diagram or perhaps on an entity diagram if the class was based on an entity's definition. When I cancel and choose change item for a message, Here we see the message line displaying the name of the method, which uses as its parameter the data element defined in the repository. As you see here, one of these parameters is that data element, CDL knowledge result, which was used in the definition of the data flow, the entity, as well as the BPM activity. This would be another example of the model reuse and repository to model integration capability. We began this course by, by asking the question, where do users begin? Well, as part of the demonstrations, we showed some ways that users do begin their projects, 
some by defining their requirements, and then diagramming their models. We reviewed the Visible Analyst integration support, the model-to-model -model integration and linking, the model integration within the repository, and between the repository and their models. The cross-reference model analysis, repository search navigation, and repository extensibility was demonstrated and emphasized, and a review of the printing and reporting options supporting the model integration features was shown. The first integration example was from the perspective of the enterprise architect. We saw how answering the interrogatives of the framework were used to generate the strategic planning statement hierarchy. These statements were then linked to the functions on the functional decomposition diagram. And then we spawned the data flow diagram set. In the second example, we demonstrated the model integration from the business analyst perspective. Again, after defining the strategic planning statements, we moved to the business process model diagram that modeled those statements. The statement and BPM activity was then referenced on the data flow process model and then implemented through the use of the data elements in the generated entity relationship diagram. Where appropriate, the models, symbols, and data elements were again linked to the planning statements, modeling the statement and validating its requirement. And the third example was from a systems analyst's perspective. We began again with the use case diagrams, which was then exploded to show the lower level use case diagrams. The system boundaries were used to define the segments of the systems, while the details were shown on that exploded use case diagram. Each one of these use cases was exploded in one case to the sequence diagram, as shown on the right, while a second use case was exploded to an activity, activity diagram, shown further to the right. We then reviewed the graphical overview of the visible analyst diagram and repository linkages available within the visible analyst. Remember, the visible analyst is an easy to use computer aided software engineering or case tool. It supports strategic planning, analysis, design, as well as object data and process modeling. Through its ease of use, it permits people outside of the traditional software development function to become involved in the development process. You should use the model integration features shown in this brief example to try and effectively communicate the system requirements and goals, proposed modifications, etc. to the stakeholders. Thank you.